दीपा वॉट इज रॉन्ग विद दिस यंग जनरेशन जब हम बड़े हो रहे थे तो वर्क वॉज फॉर रोटी कपड़ा और मकान राइट फूड क्लोदिंग एंड शेल्टर बट दंग जनरेशन दे आर रिजाइनिंग इन ड्रोव एंड दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टफ लाइक पैशन ड्रीम्स मीनिंग वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन I'm assuming you're referring to the great resignation. Yeah. I don't know if it's limited to one generation of workers, but uh, yes, uh, much has been made of it, right? That uh, there's this viral video, an article from HBR, which talks about how people are reassessing their priorities, reassessing lives and longings, and in some sense, wanting to work lower number of hours, uh, and reassessing work-life balance issues, and all of this reflected in a spate of resignations. Okay, so what has happened? Is it because they have too many choices now? They are richer. The number of resignations has increased significantly, which is what the article says. The number of open positions is also at an all-time high, uh, but the unemployment rate is, in some sense, been declining, and number of jobless claims is at a four-decade low or some such. So, so people are moving around a lot. It seems so. Kind of leaving, I'm not happy with this. Move to another job, then move to another job. So there is a bit of dissatisfaction with work. Is that what's going on? I think to answer that, one would also have to look at where some of these resignations are happening. Yeah. And at least some of the initial evidence suggests that it's with frontline employees and with low wage workers. With low wage workers. Yeah. Okay. That's at least what some of the initial reports suggest. You know, this obviously needs to be understood better and in a more rigorous manner. You know, this this phenomenon, Bhagwan, I think is the data has largely come from the US and UK. In in the EU, for instance, uh, post pandemic, more people have moved from work to leisure and not the other way around that the story is being constructed. The second is, I think one has to think about the fact that given that these resignations are happening in a certain class, it's not that people don't want to work. They do they want, want to work. Correct. It's, but they're not happy with... Correct. A certain they class of jobs, right? They don't want to just take right? it. Yeah. And the pandemic has opened up many new classes of jobs, many opportunities. Remember, we talked about business models. The, there's a lot of automation at the lower levels. And there's a lot more interesting work that's showing up and work models in the higher levels of so work. So there's, there's a shock to the system. And Correct. that has opened up new ways of thinking about work. Correct. New ways of thinking and new ways of working. And new ways of working. Yeah. Okay. So I think there's a lot of churn in that sense. And if, if people really didn't want to work and they wanted, in some sense, a different kind of life that's consistent with that, I think you would see it in other places, which is, you know, consumption patterns. You would see it in perhaps uh, things like employee engagement levels. Fewer hours for... Yeah, and, all of that. But that's not really happening. Um, and we don't know the evidence for India. No, there's largely anecdotal that, anecdotal. you know, there is something similar also happening here. There's anecdotal evidence. There's very little uh, rigorous data assessment to support those claims. To what's going on. I find this whole idea, I'll say it, that, you know, I want to do a job because I'm passionate about it or my dream is to do that. I, I, th I find those ideas ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You find uh, them ridiculous? Yeah, I mean, what is this about passion? Work is supposed to be about competence. Uh, what is this passion business? How can I be passionate about quantum physics without actually learning some math and learning some physics? And what is this idea about, oh, I, this is my dream. You know, every time there's an Oscar winner, they say, oh, uh, don't stop dreaming. I think that's a wrong advice you're giving to young people. I think the story there is also of competence, right? Because if there are lots of openings, unemployment rate is low, uh, it means that there's also a war for talent, right? There, right. Is, there is a war for competence. Okay. And the pandemic has perhaps also opened up new areas of competence. We talked about digital. We talked about analytics-driven decision. We talked about a bunch of things. There's a war for competence. So if, if you have those competencies, you're able to, in some sense, you know, sit demand back that, right? and demand it and right. demand a better life and demand a better work terms from the employers for the competence that you have. So but I agree. I, but I like the way you're putting it. You're saying it's the competence that gives you that chance to see what you like and what you don't like. So you don't start with passion. You have to start with skills. You have to start with 
uh, competence first. Correct. So you can't cart Correct. before the horse. Correct. 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 Right. I think yes, and that's in some sense what when when that competence comes with a certain sense of confidence in the labor market, obviously that gives you better negotiation uh, power and better bargaining power, and in turn making you a far more motivated, passionate individual yeah. about whatever it is and, that you're doing. And the dreams you're going to dream are also going to depend on what you're good at, right? Correct. When I become competent in something, then my dreams are going to be transformed. Correct. And so it's not like you start dreaming about being a physicist or a basketball player first. First, you go and dribble and practice and see, you know, can I be a good basketball player? Then you start dreaming about it. Okay. Again, I think in these stories, when they put dreams and passion ahead of competence and hard work, that bothers me. Sure. And I think, uh, you know, to align with, the principle that you're espousing, I think it's it's there's never been a better time. So I think it's become far easier to reskill uh, now with new technologies, new formats, new learning channels, you know, different expressions for learning. So all of this is now it's become far easier to learn to learn. It's become far easier to craft and experiment with different so learning trajectories. Gain competence in more than one thing yes. to know what it is that, that you're you really like. passionate about. Yes. So what can organizations do? How do organizations deal with this new generation that is uh, not wanting to stay at a job? I think we, all of the data uh, suggests we can quickly disabuse ourselves of the notion that people are not working or are not interested in working like they, they were. Are they are very in interested okay. in working, but they're just going to work differently. And so organizations, I think, have to buy into that premise and help their employees better respond and work in this new world. The story of our times, I would like to think, is not the great resignation, it's the great reinvention. Ah, I like that. Great reinvention, not great resignation. Yes. And an important piece of that is skills, competence, and then you marry it with passion and your dreams and it falls into place. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.